All right, so today is going to be fix the Suzuki motor day. Uh, sun's back out. It's warm again. T-shirts and shorts again. It was just that one day of northerly chill that came by. But anyways, I've got my new impeller, so I'm going to try to fix the water pump the impeller on the motor. Uh, I've got it set up on my rack, which is also my kayak stand for the ground stand. I use the two of them and then prop it on its side but I'm just gonna kind of walk you through some general maintenance stuff that I've got to do to take this thing apart very easy to work on doesn't require any high-tech tools so wouldn't be scared to pick a, up a used one if you're so inclined but anyways let's take this guy apart and fix it the first thing we're gonna do is take the power head off which is basically the motor part of it and then that separates from the, the mid unit and then the lower unit below so all there is is actually four bolts. There's a bunch of similar looking bolts, but there's four of them that connect the motor mount to the actual motor. And the way that you can tell is if you look closely, you'll see this part is all one piece. It's all one metal piece. So even though these two are together, this one goes into the plastic housing. This bolt goes into that uh, motor uh, mount. So that would be the one that we take off. And similarly, you can see the solid one piece mount goes through here and this bolt goes into it while that one goes into the plastic. So you take that one off and that mount is into the solid mount. Those two are in the plastic and that one you can see is directly into the mount as well. So those are the four bolts and then we could pop the head right off. Just that easy. Now with those four bolts uh, taken off, the power head will just pop off. There's a little gasket that uh, holds it together there. And there's um, a shift rod and then the main gear are uh, pressed into the, um, the housing there, but they'll just pop right off because they're not clipped in or anything. So we're just gonna pop it off and take the head off. we found out what the problem was. It wasn't the water pump impeller. This water tube pickup was broken. It was just sitting just like that. So that's the water that gets pushed through the cylinder head there. And that just some uh, copper tubing and it just snapped right at that band weak point. Corrosion, I tell you. So, looked online, that piece is $9.70 or there's one on sale for $7 plus five or six dollars shipping but I have to wait a week to get it like I had to wait a week to get that uh, impeller so I think this might be a job for JB Weld I think and be able to just fix it just like that so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull the two pieces out this pipe actually runs all the way to the bottom in the water pump and there's just a little like a suction cup on the bottom where it just sticks into it's not high pressure and it doesn't matter if it leaks because this is full of water anyways so I'm just gonna pull this out pull this piece out I've got a new gasket I keep spares because I take this off a lot usually I can I could reuse this over and over again but since I'm taking this piece out I'll just put a new one on and then hopefully I could weld these back together with some JB weld and then gently put it back together again and that might do us like I said, I can order a new piece here. Uh, just takes another week and I don't want to wait that long. So hopefully I can fix this. Otherwise, I'll have to wait until I get that part in for a $7 piece. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, this should just actually just wiggle right out because it's just inserted into a little port down there. There we go. That's why it's only like a $7 piece, nothing to it. And then I'm going to take this gasket off, and then this just pops right out of it. So let me do that real quick. And it's just a little rubber grommet that holds it in. And that's basically it. And that's where it broke. All right, did a little research. That's just some quarter inch copper pipe. Get that at the Ace Hardware, a couple bucks, I think like five bucks for a two foot section. But for a flared tool to flare the ends, that's like 20 bucks. 
So I got to see if I could find someone that's that Scott one. But in the meantime, I've got some two-part uh, JB Weld. I'm just going to see if I could patch this up with it just to get it working. So it's not like a high pressure deal. I was making it work when it wasn't even connected, so. Can't get to the underside, but I guess that's all right. I'm just gonna put a light coating of gasket glue on the one side, which is the bottom base. Just kind of to hold the uh, gasket in place. I don't want to put it on both because I want it to be able to separate the head unit whenever I want to and not have to replace a gasket each time. I'm just going to lie the gasket in place. There's a couple of pins that'll make sure it lines up correctly and that'll hold it when we're mounting it. Alright, putting this thing on can be a bit tricky because you need to get the directionals, whoops, shit the same direction. I think I'm good here. If you get it right, it'll just sit right. Oh shit. Damn it. It'll sit on those pins flush. And then you just put those four bolts and you're done. So now I'm just going to put these bolts in, finger tight first, then I'll use the wrench on them. Okay, that's pretty much it. There was not much else I have to do. Um, to change the prop, only thing I have to do is to take these two screws off, like the heads off, take these two screws off, and this housing uh, slips up. And then there's a rod down there with the drive shaft, and then the prop is on that drive shaft. Unbolt the four bolts and replace it. But we'll make sure if this works out, then we're good. I still might have scarred up that uh, um, water pump impeller, so if this doesn't fix it, I'm still going to have to take it apart and redo it. But you can see it's no big deal. But I'm going to do one more thing. If you can see how worn this is. That part there is just really bad. Um, and what that is, is where it goes into the actual motor right here. It rubs against that rusty metal there and it just wears itself out. This has happened to me once before. Pull on it, it snaps, and that rope gets embedded in there and you're done. You can't do anything. Um, I actually carry a spare piece of rope and a wrench now with me in my dry box so I could take this apart and uh, fix it if I need to but I'm going to be do some preventive maintenance because that looks uh, like it doesn't have very many good days on it so I'm going to do that real quick. Alright to fix this basically there's a the rope comes through here there's a knot inside there that stops it so I'm just going to pop this cap off take that knot off this is going to suck back inside there and then I'm going to take this apart, measure the rope, put a new one on and then just put it back together again. Another one that's not too complicated but important to do. So that gets the plastic off, gives us access to the rope knot. Corrosion kills everything. And that's where that knot is there so I got to take that apart or just cut it probably. I'm just going to cut that and then that'll be the measurement for me on where I want to have the uh, keep that to keep the length correct. See how it sucks back in there that fast? And if you're on the water and that happens, you can't get it out without disassembling the whole thing.
And what we're gonna work on is all inside here. So I can do that inside. All right, you can see how this uh, the starter works. Is this is the cord that would normally be going on the pull starter? It sits in the motor this way, and you pull on it. This has kind of a clutch system where this is where these plastic pieces engage the actual uh, crankshaft, the motor, and the crank. And then as you pull on it, you can see how these parts raise. When you put the tension on it, the springs push it up. It interlocks with teeth on the actual motor. So when you're pulling this, as you're starting it, this this is what turns your motor and gets it uh, going and starts the spark and hits the piston and gets the motor running. Then when you release it, because the motor's firing, that piece that's extending up right now to engage with the motor disengages and goes back down. Now it's just freewheeling and it's on the spring, which is just to recoil it back up, the rope back up so it's ready to be pulled again. So you can kind of just see how it engages and disengages. So all we're going to do is uh, we're going to, I'm going to pull it all the way out and what that's going to do is it's going to uncoil all the line and you can see right here where there's a knot and that's the end point of it. I want to get to that point where it's totally unwound. Okay, so that's the last point. So it's going from that knot and then going straight out and then into all the line that's in my hand there. That's the end result there. And it's on a lot of tension, so if I let this go, it would take all this line up and wrap it back up again. So we're at the most tension place, maxed out tension. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put a piece of uh, a pen or something in here so that it can't spin, that'll lock it and then I could release tension on the rope because it'll be locked up down here in the mechanism or whatnot. Then I could undo the rope. This is the new rope and you can kind of see the difference of uh, condition. This is, if you go online and buy the rope, they sell it for like $100 or something crazy like that. It's just regular rope, but it's Suzuki's brand and I guess they, they price it because I guess they don't want you to buy it. They just want you to go out and use whatever. But this is just some cordage I got from West Marine. Um, some general Dacron stuff, I think it is. I don't think it's regular paracord. It's a little bit more durable than that, a little bit more interwoven, so it's a little bit more resistant. And it's a smaller diameter than the original stuff. But uh, the pirate guy over at the West Marine downtown, he's all sorts of into the small outboard. So he said, no, this is the stuff you want. Just get a roll of it, and then you've got enough to last a lifetime. I use it for other stuff, but it worked great on there. And, totally trusted him now. It's kind of questionable because their stuff was a bit thicker, but this stuff works fine. It doesn't really do much. It just spins off and spins off. So I guess he was right. So anyways, that's what we're going to do. I need to grab a pen or something, figure out a spot that I can lock this in so it engages so I could uh, take that knot off. Okay, I just wedged a screwdriver and wedged it in there against that little knob there. So that takes the, takes the uh, tension off so I can take this off my hand. Maybe. And then that gives tension to this. Oh, I'm going to mouse trap myself. Okay. So there we go. So I got this knot off there and it just goes right through there. This is the stopper knot. So Be done with that. And just make a general overhand knot. same length and I'll do a couple inches more because I have to put the knot in on the other side. Okay, then we're going to go through each one of these holes. 
hole in that hole. See it? Okay, so now that is the knot stopper, and then I could take the tension off like that and then it's going to wind itself on there with tension. There we go. And we've got some little extra left over. We've got all new strings. So now I can bolt this back together again and uh, we can go from there. Alright, let's put this baby back together again. Okay, here's the trick. Now what you need to remember is, you can see like that's the dead slack there. It's unwound or it's wound up or unwound and then it's just barely got to the point where there's no slack on the line. It's loose. Then you can pull just a little bit and then that's the stop where the clutches are just getting ready to engage. Okay. Now what you have to remember is you can't just tie the knot randomly and just have a bunch of slack because what will happen is on the the way back in if you have too much slack the way back in it'll be spinning really hard and then the extra slack that you have will get sucked in there and then those uh, coils will open up and just spin around out of the uh, out of the grooves and then they'll just wind them up upside the little uh, pinion there so they'll basically have slack and then they'll come out of those rails basically is the easy way I can explain it. So the only way to prevent that is you need to tie the knot so that when this is sitting on there in a dead stop position it's under pressure. The line is still under pressure that it comes back and it doesn't hit that soft spot. It's still going and if we had the opportunity it still would go in a little bit farther. Okay so that's what I'm measuring is from the dead stop spot to the far extension. I have to get that bumper stop and on that end so this is sitting right about here would be perfect I want that knot to end right there so then when it comes back it's gonna stop there but there is still this much tension of it that it could go in a little bit farther if it had to Perfect. Finished the um, water pump pickup, so we're just gonna let that dry for a little while. Put the new pull starter rope on, and I went ahead and lubed the cable. But I think I'm, I just need to replace this cable. There's some wear spot or something. It's a, uh, it's getting stuck in there. And then when the motor's running, it'll vibrate shut. But. The carburetor spring is fine. It's just somewhere in the cable is binding or it just started doing it. So I think it's just got a wear spot on it. So anyways, it still works. But uh, anyways, that should do it for the motor. I'm going to give it a couple more hours and then fire it up and test run it and see if that water tube pickup is going to be okay. All right, let's test this guy out here. We've got water flowage.
right, looks like the motor is ready to go. So check the weather and see if there's a shot at anything tomorrow. So let's take a look what we've got going on here this next week. If you could take a look at the long range forecast, we have five, six, seven days of crappy weather, another two days of crappy weather, so nine days of crappy weather, and then things might be cleaning up here towards the 18th and after that. So that is not good. And to break it down, 25 knots, 25 knots, 25 knots, 25 knots, 30 knots, 30 knots, 30, 25 knots, 25 knots, 25 to the teens, and then it finally breaks that uh, January 18th. So that is what we have to deal with, not looking good for uh, lots of fishing videos. So we'll have to see what we can get done this week. But anyways, that is just a heads up of what to expect going forward. I think I'll try to get out tomorrow regardless, just so I can put some time on that motor, check it out, see if those repairs are going to hold, if I need to order that part or come up with a new uh, part on my own. But uh, anyways, try to get something happening and then we'll try to make something to film. Uh, the good thing is that the temperatures will go back up to the high 70s, close to 80s starting by the weekend um, it's actually warming now all the way up but uh, we'll be back to the high 70s towards the weekend so that'll be just being out on the water piece of cake and be able to do some stuff so anyways that is what we've got for the video uh, thanks for watching and i'll see you next video